Hi there. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how we can take shape key data from Blender and use it in an action editor and then export that into Unity. Let's take a look now. So I'm going to be using this root motion animation of a dinosaur that I am uh, currently building for a Unity project. And you know, right now it's a pretty simple block out of the actual character. Uh, but that's not the point. The point of today's tutorial is just to look at how we can create the shape key data and export it out to Unity. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the root motion for this particular animation because we don't need to complicate things in Unity by having things such as root motion. Now, if you're interested in learning about root motion in Blender and Unity, uh, Definitely leave a comment down below and give this video a like. That will tell me that people are interested. So I've just turned off the root and that will just ensure that the character stays in place. So no root motion is applied now. So the first step of creating a shape key is to actually create the shape keys. And that can be done under the object data properties tab. You want to press the plus button two times. One time is going to create the basis and the second time is going to create your first key. We can call this one breath for this example. You want to make sure that you go into edit mode while you have the shape key selected. I'm just going to scale up the chest to create a breath. Now when I change the value, we should see that the dinosaur is breathing. If you're just a beginner and you're still learning Blender and a lot of what I'm saying might not make sense to you, I highly suggest heading over to my website, blendertutorials.org. It's a paid tutorial service that really breaks down the itty gritty of Blender, specifically for beginners, to really help you jumpstart your Blender journey. So if you're a coder in Unity and you wanna learn how to create really awesome 3D scenes, I highly suggest heading over there. I put a lot of time and effort into the website. It's still a work in progress, but I think you'll gain a lot of really useful tips and techniques out of it. So that's www.blendertutorials.org. See you over there. Back to this tutorial though. Before we move on, I think it's important that we address exactly what is a shape key doing? Well, a shape key is essentially a different variation of the locations of the vertices of a particular mesh. So on this example plane here, we have a basis. The basis shape key is essentially the default state of your shape. Every subsequent shape key by default is relative to the basis. So what that means is any change in vertice location that we make, for example, on key one, if I change this vertex to be a little higher, if we then activate the value and go to one on that shape key, it's going to be relative to the basis. Any change to the basis will then carry over. One thing to note when you're editing these shape keys is you want to ensure that you have the selected shape key that you want to edit selected before you go into edit mode of your mesh. Another thing to note is you probably do not want to change the vertex count of your mesh after you've applied shape keys. It can be done, but it does create a lot of headaches to fix up any potential errors or problematic data that can occur because the way vertices work in 3D is they're all assigned an ID. And if those IDs become mismatched, then what can eventually occur is a mess. And it's not something you want to clean up. So basically, finish your mesh before you start adding your shape keys. It's very, very important that you do that because it will save you a lot of time and hassle in the future. Okay. Now, before we continue any further with this tutorial, I do want to address the elephant in the room, and that is modifiers. You want to ensure that only an armature modifier exists on your model. Uh, and if you don't have an armature modifier, that's okay too, but it can only be that modifier. The reason is, is when you go to export this, the apply modifiers function does not work with shape keys at all. So the only modifier that does work with it is the armature modifier. So if you have any modifiers on your mesh, like a mirror modifier or a subdivision surface modifier, you want to apply them before starting this process because the shape key data will not be able to be passed out. And that's got to do with vertex IDs. 
Now to give an example of creating an animation with shape keys, I'm gonna switch over this editor to the timeline editor so we can better see the frames for our animation. So now that I've got this, I'm just gonna set a keyframe on frame zero. And then I'm gonna put a keyframe in the middle and I'm gonna set that to one, that's the full breath. And then at the end, I'm gonna bring it back down to zero. And what we should have now is we should have a breath cycle. So it's breathing in and out, in and out, in and out every cycle. So if I was to export this out via file and then export FBX, oh, and if you're interested in knowing what export settings I use, give this video a like and let me know in the comments below that you'd like to see it. It's definitely something that I can show, but for the most part, we're just saving it into our assets folder with a lot of default settings. We should see now in Unity that we have a new asset. On the FBX prefab, you wanna ensure under model that blend shapes import is checked on. Then under animation, we can find our run animation from the list and we can play it. We'll see that the breath is playing correctly. However, due to the way we've set it up in Blender, if we play any other animation, we'll also see the breath as well. The reason for this is the way we've set this up. Because the breath exists on the timeline rather than the action editor, it's basically being overlaid on top of every single animation, which is not what we want. Well, in this case, we don't at least. So we need a way to get that data and put it into the action editor. Unfortunately, shape key data can't be put into the action editor by default. The only thing that can use the action editor is armatures. So we need a way to link the shape key to an armature. And the way we're gonna do that is via drivers. Now drivers are a whole separate subject. However, the basics of it are that we can assign our value to be driven by a variable such as the X or Y location of a bone inside our armature. So that's essentially what we're gonna set up here. I'm gonna switch my timeline back to the action editor and let's create a new bone that's gonna act as this driver bone. So in edit mode for the armature, we've just created this bone here, which I'm just gonna scale down and position above the rig like so. I'm then going to parent it to the root which isn't necessary, but this is something that I like to do with the drivers. And I'm gonna call it something appropriate for this tutorial, such as driver example. Another really important thing to do is to check off deform. If you haven't set the weights for your mesh yet, this will just ensure that when you do go to set the weights, it won't really be taken into account in the automatic calculation. We can add a driver by right clicking on the value and then clicking add driver. It should turn purple if it's done successfully. I like to right click it again and then go to driver editor. This is just a better window than the default one that pops up. This here is our variable. We're going to assign it to our armature and then we're going to find our driver bone which should then appear underneath. Currently the type of variable is set to an X location. Now, we want to move it when it's moving up and down. So we're going to set it temporarily to the Z location of the bone. But there is a little bit of a caveat to this. Uh, then under space, we're going to set this to local space. This will ensure that it's moving in the local space of the bone. And this is where the caveat comes in, by the way. So let's see what happens when we move this bone. If the driver is set up correctly, it should move the driver. It should breathe in and out, but we're not seeing that. We're not seeing it do that. There is a reason for this. The reason is, is because bones up and down in local space isn't Z. It's actually Y, because Y is the forward direction and a bone, we can think of it as an arrow, is what is giving us our direction. So if we turn on axis under viewport display, I'm also gonna turn on wireframe so we can see the axes as well. And we can see that Y is the one that is pointing up as seen here. So what we need to do is we just need to switch it over to Y. And this is only because we're using local space. 
So now when we move up and down, we should see that driver on the graph on the side there starts to move. And accordingly, it starts to breathe. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the bone up on the Z axis to a certain amount, essentially the maximum amount I want to move it in the viewport for my controls. So let's say I want to move it to around here. This is the max. As we can see in our graph, it only gets to about 0.5, point, actually 0.25, excuse me. We need to increase it by just grabbing our graph here and I'm just going to increase until the point is on one. This is one way we could do it. We could also play around with the expression by timesing the value. But now when we get to this point in our space, it's going to equal to around one. So now what we can do is in pose mode, we can get the local position on the Y axis of this bone. We're going to navigate to bone constraints and we're going to add a limit location constraint. We're then basically going to tick everything on. And then with Y, we're going to set a min to zero and a max. We're going to paste in that value that we've created and set everything to local space. Another thing is you want to set effect transform to be on. This is very important as it can cause problems down the road. Now it's very, very easy to use this controller as an animator. It only goes to that maximum level and we'll know that it's going to equal to one on the driver value. So now we can change our timeline back to an action editor and we can start animating this because it's now tied to the bone. So this is really, really powerful. Let's just go through here and I'm now going to animate this on every nth keyframe. Perfect. So now it's breathing in and out. Okay. Now that that's done, I'm just going to export again and we're going to open it up back in Unity. So that should take but a second. Okay, it's just refreshed in Unity. And now if we go over to the run animation and we press play, we should see that it's breathing in and out. And if we go to any other of the animations, it shouldn't have the breath animation on it because it's only tied to that particular action. So this is really, really, really powerful. If you want to see more tutorials on Blender and Unity combined together, leave a comment down below. I would love to do more. And depending on how many of you want it, I'll absolutely do some more. Also, if you want to hit that like button and tell YouTube's algorithm that this has been a good video, please do so. It's free and it really helps this channel out. I want to thank every single one of you for watching up to here. I really, really appreciate it. And I hope that this has been able to help you transfer your actions correctly into Unity. Best of luck and thank you. This is Hayden Falzon from BlenderTutorials.org signing off.